Yo, what is going on guys? Bobby here and today we have another dope video for you guys. So today what we're going to be doing is a siege guide. Now you guys, I've been waiting for another guide for quite some time ever since I released my Brawl Ball guide. You guys really, really enjoyed that one. It's about 45 minutes long. So for all of you guys who want to become pros at Brawl Ball, definitely go check that out. It is probably my favorite video that I've ever made because I put so much time and so much work into it. I know a lot of you guys liked it and said it made you way better at Brawl Ball. So I thought it is about time to come out with another guide. And today we're going to be doing siege now the reason i'm doing siege besides the fact that it's my favorite mode is it's probably the easiest mode to push cups in all the top players who are grinding trophies always grind siege because once you know what to do it is basically the easiest mode to continuously just win over and over and over again now before i get into the video it's very imperative that you guys come and show up to the premieres the premieres are absolutely awesome there's tons of you guys there and we're always answering questions interacting talking and it's just really good you guys should definitely check it out it definitely enhances the video and just makes it a whole lot better when you can watch it with other people including myself so try and make it out to the premieres they're usually at 5 p.m eastern to 7 30 p.m eastern sometime in that range but anyways to get into the siege video so let's talk about the meta first now the meta is a little bit interesting so let's go to a friendly room over here and let's talk about different maps so here you guys can see we have about 10 to 14 different gem maps there are a lot of gem grab maps you guys know there's a lot of showdown maps there's a lot of brawl ball maps these types of modes have very definitive metas in Siege, it's not really like that. There are four maps and they're all fairly different. So although some brawlers are good in a lot of the maps, such as Gene is good in all the maps and Barley is good in three of the four, no brawlers are really good in four of the four outside of Gene. So what we're going to be doing is breaking down every single map for you guys today, but that's going to be towards the end of the video. We have three points of talking outside of talking about metas and maps. Those three points are going to be how to get the first bolt, which is extremely important in Siege then how to attack, and how to defend. So with that being said, let's hop into the first part, which is how to get the first bolt. Let's get into it. So first bolt in a siege game. So this is extremely important because this basically sets up the entirety of the siege. So the first bot is usually going to have three bolts spawn or four bolts spawn at maximum, which means most of the time, one team is going to be getting a level two or level siege bot. And this is extremely imperative for the rest of the game. It's very important that you guys do get this bot because it's going to set up the rest of the game. It's going to allow you to control the rest of the game and it's going to allow you to decide what happens throughout the game. So we're going to show you three different strategies on how to get the first bolt. One of them I don't recommend. All three of them work. One of them I don't recommend. The other one is okay. And then the last one I'm going to show you I highly recommend. So that being said, the first strategy I'm going to show you guys is BB. Now BB is really good at getting the first bolt. Um, that's probably what BB's best trait is in the game. Unfortunately, BB is not a very strong brawler right now. So this is the one that I really don't recommend doing unless you guys are trying to push your BB. But let's hop into the game and let's show you guys exactly how to get that first bolt with BB. So essentially the goal is just to walk up and use your knockback to knock the opposing team back. Obviously you go for the first bolt, you just run up there. Speed star power obviously makes it better and you just run up, swing and move back. That's literally all you need to do, and you're going to get the first bolt, which is obviously the most important bolt of the game. Really simple. No other brawler can get there faster outside of Mortis, but please do not use Mortis in Siege. Even if you guys see me make a video on it, it's not going to work for you guys. Do not make, do not play Mortis in Siege, but that's the first strategy on how to get the bolt. Now again, really easy, basically in a 100% rate. The only reason, or the only way you won't get it is against the Mortis or against another BB. But the reason I wouldn't recommend doing it is BB isn't that great on attack, isn't that great on defense, and is decent in control. So I wouldn't really recommend the strategy. So the second strategy I have for you guys, which is a better one, and sometimes that is used in competitive gameplay, is the one tank strategy. So usually your comp is going to have one tank unless you're playing on factory rush. And basically what you do is you grab that tank and you just rush that bolt because it has so much HP. Now you're going to end up getting it unless you're facing another tank, a BB or a Mortis. The BB and the Mortis would get there faster than you guys but if you're facing another tank it's just about who you know who spawns where the rng and if you don't face a tank you're able to just tank enough shots to go and get that bolt so let's hop into the game and let's show you guys exactly how to do it again this one is very simple so i'm going to be going rosa here and you guys are going to see i'm just going to walk up over here i spawned on the right side which made it a little bit more difficult but you guys can see i'm just going to move up the map they're trying to do the same thing and i'm just going to tank some shots and be able to get that bolt gene tries to kill me he's not going to be able to because i have more hp and that's going to be a really simple first bolt for you guys so majority of the time if you get that first bolt you're going to end up getting the first bot so which is why i'm not showing you the rest of the game it's just really simple get this first bolt and that's going to put you in really good positions 
that's the second way for how to get the first bowl and I do recommend using that one sometimes dependent on your comp but the third one is the one that I really suggest it's the one that most competitive teams do is they identify where the first bolt is going to spawn and they're going to send a tank and then a support unit to come and help so the one that we chose because it, it, it exemplifies the absolute best how to do this is Frank and Tick so I'm going to be playing Frank and literally all I have to do is use my 10k HP get up there and just march my way forward and collect that first bolt while the tick is just going to be spamming that area making sure that nobody can cross and if they do they're going to be hit with a ton of damage this basically guarantees the fact that we're going to get the first bolt so let's hop into the game and let's show you guys how it's done so here we go into the game, we're facing another Frank, Barley, and Gene, very similar comps, both good on this map, and again, you guys are going to see, I just make my way up along with them, Tick is going to spam that zone, completely zoning off that area for them to go and get the bolt, the Gene is dead, and I was able to get that first bolt, and that's going to secure us the first bot. It's really simple, very easy to do, just you have to make sure you're actually executing these strategies. Again, there's nothing really too, too secret about Siege. You guys just have to know what you're doing, pick the right brawlers, and actually execute what I'm telling you to do. So that's going to wrap up how to get the first bolt. Again, it's very easy. This is a very big part of the game that's completely underlooked or overlooked or whatever you say. You guys have to make sure you guys are getting that first bolt. So do one of these three strategies that I showed you guys. With that being said, let's hop into the second subject, which is how to attack and how to properly do damage to the Ike. Now, this is, again, one of the most important facets of siege um you can lose a game by attacking believe it or not we're going to show you guys how that's possible right here let's hop into the game and let's talk about exactly how we lost a game attacking okay so here we go we're getting into the next game here we're going to show you guys exactly how you can lose a game while attacking so you guys see we get the first spot at level three we're in a good position so far this game so what we're going to do is we're going to walk up like normal and try and do damage oh, i almost died over there almost uh to be honest the spike again almost dies but our Carl goes down and we're going to move up over here and we're going to go all in. You guys are going to see we all died. That was completely unnecessary. We should not have gone all in because you guys can see there's 42% on the safe or on the Ike left and we're winning 2-1. If we didn't go in, we could have chipped down a little bit. The Ike probably would have been at about, I would say, 50 to 60%, which is more than enough damage that you guys need to do on a first push. And we would still have control and the bolt lead. Because we all died, we all had to come out of spawn. They were all alive and they ended up getting control of the mid. So what this is going to allow them to do is win the bot. It's going to be a stronger bot than ours and they can either go all in or they can reserve and keep control. This is going to bring me into our next important topic, which is deciding whether you guys want to go all in or not. This is a really important decision and you guys are going to have to play Siege enough times to just understand the basic IQ and to understand everything on when to go in and when not to but let's hop into the next game and I'm going to teach you guys when to go in when not to and how to make that decision okay so here we go into our next game and you guys are going to see at this point of the game we have a three to nothing lead basically identical to what happened last time we had control we're able to get the first spot and we're basically playing the same comp so what we're going to do is we're going to move up here but this time we're going to have a strategy this time instead of going all in we're going to do some damage and then make our way back out you guys can see it's two to one and bolts exactly like last time we're going to go in nick is going to get a pull and he's going to kill them i'm going to do a little bit of damage chip it down and we're all safely going to make our way out right here you guys can see they're all hurt they've all had damage done to them and over here we're all full hp they're making their way to us we all have supers we're all set up and there's basically nothing that they can do so if we went all in, it obviously would have been different. They would have had the control in the middle. We would have been coming out of spawn and they would have been able to keep control from us. But instead of going all in, we decided to stay alive. We're alive, doing well. We're able to get kills, hold control for the entirety. Even if we go down, it doesn't matter because we did our chip damage. Usually you'll do somewhere in between 20 and 40%. We did, a, we did 53 here, which is really good. And the rest of the game is going to be a walk in the park. So I actually died, which is something important. Don't die when you're about to get your bot because obviously Obviously you guys want all three of you guys going up but since we played it smart since we had control our barley is very easily able to take it out and because we played it smart we're able to win this game so again if you're not a hundred percent sure you guys can do a hundred that you guys can do a hundred percent sorry to the opposing safe then 100 percent do not go all in keep control try and manage it if not don't go just don't go all in unless you guys know you're going to win is basically the moral of the story so let's hop into the next game and let's talk about the next talking point for attack Okay, so for this game, what we're going to be doing is talking about rules in Siege. Now, we haven't gone 
to that part of the video yet but basically what you guys have to know is most most comps are gonna have a tank they're gonna have a damage dealer and then kind of like a mid so what the tank does is the tank is obviously gonna be the tank it's gonna tank shots and it's also gonna tank shots for their bot when they come down it's also gonna be your main defensive unit so I'm gonna be the tank for this video Ali is the barley and her job is basically to do as much damage as possible we're going to show you guys how to play barley or your damage dealer later i'm going to show you guys exactly how to play tank so what you want to do is you want to be the one that's always ahead of your of your teammates you guys are going to see ali staying back and as soon as this bot dies for us what i'm going to do is i'm going to activate my super tank some shots and have our damage dealers do more damage if the barley was ahead of the rosa then she then the barley would have been taking damage and we definitely not maximize our damage but like this we can have our main damage dealer barley continuously chucking shots while i'm just there tanking the damage so if you play tank and if you're on attack don't stand behind your barley don't stand behind your brock your tick or whatever is going to do majority of the damage get in the way soak as many shots as possible for your damage dealer that is going to be your role as the tank on attack now let's go and show you guys how to play the correct role of damage dealer on attack let's hop into the next game and let's show you guys what to do Okay, so going into this game, we're going to talk about safety and how to properly attack when you're the damage dealer. So here you guys can see I am the barley on this map, which means I am going to be doing majority of the damage on our push. So it's 2-0 for us. We're able to get a level 2 bot. So right here, I see that we have the bot. I'm going to play this super safe. I'm not going to risk dying at all. I'm not going to take any risk. I'm going to be as safe as possible. You guys can see I'm on the other side as everybody else. And literally all I'm going to do is stand here and chuck shots. I'm not going to shoot at anybody else. I'm going to keep my distance. I'm going to stay as far away from possible as everyone. Just stand there. Continuously chuck shots. Our teammates are going to die. But it doesn't matter because we're the damage dealer. Again, stand there. Just take shot after shot. Play safe. Do whatever you guys need to do. And it's going to be an easy one push if you guys decide to go all in and know you guys can win. Again, don't just go close to the Ike just because you guys feel like being closer with your damage dealer. Keep your distance because usually your damage dealer are going to be ranged weapon units anyway, such as like Brock, Barley, Tick, Pipe, or whatever it is. Keep your distance, do some safe damage, and you guys are going to end up winning the game really easily. And that's going to be your role as the attacker. So we're going to do one more thing for the offense over here and this is just really simple it's something a lot of you guys know but it just had to do a little bit of additional chip damage so what i'm going to do is talk about say you have 10 percent left on the safe there are more than enough brawlers that can just dive in or super and do enough damage so let's hop into the next game let's show you a couple of them and let's talk about other brawlers that can make this work so for this game, you guys are going to see three brawlers that are really good at doing damage. Now, unfortunately, the Daryl doesn't get the super off, but we're going to talk about all the brawlers after this game that can do damage. We just want to show you guys a little bit of an example. So we have myself on Penny, we have Ali the Barley, and Nick is going to be Daryl. So Ali the Barley basically is just going to be able to walk up with her super, and you can basically super it from any side just outside the Ike. She stood in just to make sure it gets a 100% hit, and she's going to be able to do 13 to 14% damage. Now, with Penny Turret, you can put it on the outside. It might not lock on, but every single time the Penny Turret explodes, it's going to do about 9 to 11% damage, which is really good. So you guys can see we didn't get the bot, and we already took off 24%. So let's go over the Brawlers right here, and let's talk about which ones can do damage. Majority of them can. So you have Penny, who can do a ton of damage, and if you use balls of fire and it locks onto the safe it does 10 percent uh, per shot which is absolutely huge daryl you can roll in and do about 30 percent with piper you can get a couple shots with which will do about 10 percent brock you can go dive in and if you use this star power you do about 23 and if you use this star power you do about 25 percent gene you can't really do it with nita you can't really do it with barley you can use your super and do 13 percent damage or dive in just walk in and with super you can do about 23 percent Mortis you can't, Colt you can get a super in, do it about 10%, Primo you can jump on the Ike, do about 20%, Bull you can dive in, do about 28%, B you can't really, 8-bit you can throw your turret in and do a bit of damage but it's not really worth it, you guys are only going to do about 15%, M's you can't really do anything, Mike you can't really do anything, Tara you can't, Bo you can throw your mines on the safe so when they spawn and walk over the mines are going to activate and you guys can do about 10 to 15% per set of mines. Poco you can't, Rico you can get a super off, do about 10%, Crow you can jump in, do percentage based on how good your crow jump is, Shelly you can't, BB you can throw in your bubble, do about 9%, Tick you can dive in, do about 9%, Leon you can't go in, Sandy you can throw in your super and if it does damage you guys are going to do about 5-6%, to 6%. Carl you can't really, Spike you can throw your super in, do about 8%, Jesse you can't do anything, Rosa can dive, do about 10%, 
10 to 8 percent if you guys have your super though you can do about 20 percent max you can't pam you can't and mr p you can no longer do any damage with unless you dive in and you're going to do like four percent so those are all of the brawlers in the game you guys just heard what percent what they can do by just diving in alone again it's a viable strategy to do if you're all there alone and you have your barley super might as well do some damage to the yike if there's 10 percent left you guys know all the brawlers now that can do 10 percent or more damage if there's five percent you guys know all the brawlers that you can do damage with with your supers it's a really effective way to win games and it's going to win you an extra two or three out of 20 games so it's actually really really cool to have that boost so let's talk about the next talking point let's get into some games and let's move on to defense and talk about how easy it is to defend once you guys know what you're doing so what we're going to be doing this game is talking about defending now defending is really interesting it's really simple once you know what you're doing so there's a few defensive units that you want to be using in every single game. So you guys want to have a Bull, a Rosa, a Frank, or a Daryl if you're playing in any map outside of Factory Rush. Now again, we're going to talk about specific maps after the game, but the reason you guys want to have them is because they do a lot of damage and you can tank shots for the robot. So this game in specific, I'm going to be going Bull just because Bull is probably the best one at defending. And all I'm going to do is defend. So a lot of people, they stand inside the zone over here and start to tank shots. But what you want to do is catch the bot right over here. And you're basically going to go in and suicide while doing damage to the bot. So you guys can see I did 40% alone before the bot even came in. That's going to slow them down and it's not going to let them do anything. In fact, their barley is going to die. And they're actually going to end up doing 0% because I'm going to respawn with invincibility, more damage, and perfectly like that, you guys are going to do damage. So again, do that with Rosa, do that with Barley, with Daryl, and with Bull. You guys are going to do a ton of damage. It's going to be really good and really useful. So make sure you guys are doing that instead of letting it come all the way into your zone and then start attacking it. It's a really easy way to defend. Really good. Very optimal strategy. You guys are going to die. Respawn before the bot's even done. So don't even worry about being late. Let's hop into the next game and talk about the next defensive strategy. Okay, so for this game, what we're going to be doing is showing you guys the two other defensive units that do actually work in every map outside of Factory Rush. Now, Factory Rush is a very unique map. We're going to talk about that one a little bit later. But what you guys want to do is you could have a Spike or a Gene on your team. Now, Spike Super is actually really good on defense, and Gene Pull is actually also very good on defense. So with Spike, all you want to do is be able to get your super, you're going to throw it right on top of the bot, and you're going to go as close to the bot as you can and just start hitting it. Ali over here does 30%, and then all I'm going to do is get my Gene Pull, pull the robot outside the zone, and what that's going to do is make the Ike focus on their players instead of the bot, while the bot is just going to be standing with you on the outside. That's going to kill them and minimize their damage. You guys saw the Barley was able to do very little damage, and that is two other defensive units that you can use outside of the tanks that I mentioned. Again, with other brawlers, you guys can do whatever you want to defend. Obviously, Barley shots can go for the Ike. It's just you want to have those defensive units if you guys want to maximize the damage that you guys do. So we have one more defensive clip to show you guys. So let's hop into it. This one is really important. It's called killing their attacker killing their main damage dealer so we spoke about barley and how good he was on this map so we're going to be playing a game against the barley and you guys are going to see our comp so let's head into it before i talk a little bit more and let's show you guys what to do okay so for this game we're actually going to lose the first bot and if you guys ask why we're playing the same people over and over we played some real games where we're just trying to interact with you guys and show you guys exactly what to do and show you guys the exact situations that i'm talking about so we're going to look at their comp we're going to see that they have rosa they're gonna have sandy and they're gonna have barley so immediately what we realize is barley does by far the most damage for them so what we want to do is zone them out so we have a frank and a spike which are two defensive units and you guys are going to notice i'm a gene now i don't do too much to the bot as a gene so instead of shooting the bot what i'm going to do is focus their main damage their main damage is going to stay back i'm going to be able to kill it and because i killed their main damage the the barley's not going to go over he's not going to chip you guys saw that we defended the bot properly last time but the barley still was made, was able to do 26 percent because we zoned out their offensive unit they're not able to do any damage and we're going to defend it 100 percent properly so just use use those very simple tips that i just showed you guys use those brawlers that i just showed you guys and you guys are going to do an excellent job on defense there's no other secret tips outside of that just do exactly what i showed you guys and you guys are going to be successful so that's all three parts how to get the first bot, how to attack, and how to defend, which is really instrumental. That's basically the core of Siege. It's really simple, yet complex. You guys, you guys just have to master doing these tips that I taught you guys, and you guys are going to do a fantastic job at Siege. 
Okay, so we've made it to the very end of the video. You guys have learned how to get the first bolt. You guys have learned how to attack and you guys have learned how to defend. Now we have not spoken too much about the siege meta and I already explained why, but I'll explain it why again. You guys have four different maps and they're very, very different. You guys can see a very clear difference between this map and this map. A lot of walls, a lot of range, things are very different and there are only four maps. So there's no definitive meta across all four. So what we're gonna do is go into each map and break it down by showing you the maps and showing you guys what to do, how to lane, what to do exactly as the pros do. So first we're gonna talk about nuts and bolts. So nuts and bolts is a very commonly played map when it comes to ladder or when it comes to uh, competitive. Um, there's a lot that you can use here, but what you guys wanna do is the strategy of one tank and one to two to support slash throwers. So what I usually go on this on this map is you wanna use Rosa or Bull. You don't really wanna use Frank on this map and you don't really wanna use Primo here or Daryl. It's definitely a Rosa or a Bull and I would highly recommend using Rosa here. And then you probably wanna use a Lobber. So I would suggest using Tick or Jean or Tick or Barley, sorry. And then either use Jean, Spike, B or Sandy. The reason I suggest these brawlers is cause look at, the, if you guys can look at it here, Tanks are obviously really good as it's a very close quarter maps, but if the only way you can make it not close quarter is if you use a thrower. Throwers are very lethal here, also do very high end damage on the safe. So you guys are gonna have one tank and one thrower, and then you guys can have just like a neutral kind of person, like a B, a Spike, a Jean, or a Sandy. Personally, I would recommend using Jean or Sandy just because it helps out your tanks and your throwers to have Jean or to have a Sandy super on the ground. So you guys constantly know where they are and you guys can be hiding. And at the same time, Jean is really good because Jean is just good in every single siege map. Jean is probably the best siege brawler because you can always push them or pull them into your zone, get really easy kills. And it's really, really awesome. So the next thing that we're going to do is talk about some assembly required. So this and Nuts and Bolts probably have the two most similar metas in the game. So what you want to do here is you can either go two tanks and one support slash thrower or one tank, two support slash thrower. It's really up to you. This is actually a really diverse map. So tank, I would use it in this order. I would go either Frank, Rosa, Daryl, or Bull. I would not suggest using Primo. Frank is really, really good on this map because there's so many walls and the 10k HP, you guys can collect a lot of bolts and run away with it. Rosa is very good at Siege, probably one of the best, if not the best Siege Brawler up there with Jean. And then Daryl and Bull are also really good. Now support slash thrower, there aren't too many on this. I would highly recommend using Tick on this map. Tick is an absolute beast on this map. Outside of Tick, you got Barley, Spike, and Jean. Those are the only Brawlers I would use here. I would might 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 throw in Carl on that but those are the only brawlers that I would use in some assembly required now to note for this in nuts or nuts and bolts there's not really lanes or not really anything you guys just want to focus where the bolts are focus where your opponents are and the rest of the game will kind of just unfold and unravel now the next two maps are when it gets a little bit more tricky and a little bit more specific so we're going to talk about junk park first so junk park is definitely the most complex map when it comes to comps because the mid is so important and so separated from the sides so the mid here, you want to either go Tick, I would recommend using very much, you can go Tick, Jean, Penny, B, Piper, or Brock. Those are a lot of options that you guys can go. Do what you're most comfortable with, because winning mid is the most important thing on this map. It's basically going to decide everything else. You're going to have a lane, and one of your lane has to be one of your lanes has to be a defensive unit. So I would either go Rosa or Daryl. Those are the two that I would highly recommend going. You could go Frank, but I, again, I would highly recommend using Rosa. Your lane, you're gonna have two lanes, and one of them has to be a defensive unit because you guys need that defense, obviously. Because all the mid brawlers that I just named for you guys outside of Gene are horrible at defending. And then you're gonna have another lane, so you're gonna you guys are gonna have a Tick, a Barley, a Spike, or like a Carl. So again same strategy you're gonna have a lobber or a support unit you're gonna have your mid and then your tank this is a really complex map um additionally don't use tick as a mid and then use barley as a lane two throwers is a recipe for disaster you guys are gonna lose every single time you're facing a bot because they're just gonna come at you, you guys are gonna have no dps and you guys are gonna get absolutely squashed so that's gonna be junk park and finally we're gonna talk about factory rush now factory rush is my favorite map because it's so range and it is so complex as well so Factory Rush is the one siege map in the game where a tank is not necessary and I wouldn't even recommend using a tank. Now the reason being is that you can defend really well here with Bo and Pam. The bot has to walk a really long way and outside of walking a really long way it has to walk all around those walls right in front of your Ike. So the Ike's going to be shooting at it, do an additional about 10-12% to damage that it does normally. 
on any other map just because it has to walk all the way around and a pam can absolutely melt it as it's walking down the map now the only other bro the only tank i would recommend using here is daryl because daryl is really good at defense but daryl can also roll around that has way more mobility than the other tanks so it's the only reason i'd suggest it so for here your defensive unit you want to have Bo, pam or daryl for your mid you want to have piper brock penny pam or gene for your lane you want to have Bo, pam daryl mr p sandy gene or carl out of all the maps this is the hardest map to get a full to get a one push on or to get a hundred percent win on a lot of the times it's just about who can defend who especially in competitive games you guys are going to see a lot in this map games that are like 56 to 38 where you guys just can't go all in because there's just too many walls here defending the ike so again very interesting map i would recommend going what i did for you or what i showed you guys today are exactly what i spoke about try different combinations again it's not going to work for everybody just like the three brawlers that i was using in the video work around try and find the comp that's right for you but use the brawlers remotely that i named for you guys try and list try and get one of the ones that were in the list but anyways that's going to end my siege guide for you guys so if you guys enjoyed it leave a like and let me know in the comment section below these types of vids do take a really long time to record but i don't mind making them because i feel like they really really help you guys i'm going to consider doing a gem grab vid but i'm not too sure exactly which mode is everyone's favorite mode i asked supercell but if unfortunately that information isn't available the only thing we know is that brawl ball is by far the most played 3v3 mode so let me know in the comment section below what guide you guys want next but anyways that's gonna be it for today i hope you guys enjoyed this guide it did take me a while to make so i hope you guys play siege hope you guys gain some trophies let me know how it goes but it's gonna be it for me today i will catch you guys again tomorrow peace